All right, Irene in Birmingham, Alabama. Irene, how are you? Brian, how are you? Good, good. What's going on? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to be here. That's the first thing. Thank you for the good job you're doing. Thank you. Um, I, I spoke. I'm speaking through Irene. I'm Amani. Um, I filed an asylum through my lawyer. Uh, back in uh, April sixth, and I didn't hear anything from them until like early this month, when uh, the attorney was calling me to ask me for the notice, uh, the receipt, or no the notice receipt, mm -hmm. and I told him I have not received anything, and he told me by now I should have received something because he need to file for my uh, work permit. Why is your attorney now calling you seven months later? Why didn't he follow up on this before? Um, I don't know what has been happening because now I think this is the fifth month after the application. I kept. When did you come to the United States? The what? When did you come to the United States? Uh, 2019, April 27. April 27, 2019. <laughs> yes. All right. So you filed within one year. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, you're asking me what happened to your asylum case. I don't know. It's easy to find out, which is, you know, let's contact immigration and see what happened. Have you called them? Okay. Well, when I called them, my patient told me that they don't disclose any, anything to do with the asylum. And, uh, my lawyer so far has, uh, sent to them a letter indicating that he didn't receive a receipt. I didn't receive either. Uh -huh. And my question what, is, what proof, do you think what, it's a good... Do you think it's what? Go ahead. Do you think it's a good idea for me to uh, request for an appointment for info? Absolutely. Uh, in the ab local? Ab absolutely. Say, I filed for asylum. I never got any receipt notice. Bring proof. What I was about to say, what evidence does your lawyer have that he submitted this? Did he send it by certified mail? Did he send it overnight mail? How did he yeah, send he this to immigration? Bring <laughs> proof and go down and make an info pass appointment. That has to be your next step. Absolutely. He sent it uh, by mail and they sent me the, the tracking number. Okay, so if immigration has the tracking number for it, they should have a record of it. So it sounds to me that most likely uh, you didn't get the receipt notice in the mail. That was lost. But if there's a tracking number and it was received by immigration, it's got to be there. So absolutely, your next your next thing you have to do is make an info pass appointment. And when I try to like I request for the appointment, they're asking me for the case number or the receipt number, which I don't have. Right. All right. So hold on one second. It sounds like you need some help. We'll we'll help you deal with all that. Hold on one second, okay? All right. All right. Let's go to Dan in Mesquite, Texas. Dan. Hi, Brock. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm fine. <clears throat> Thank you for what you do. God bless you and your crew. Okay. My pleasure. What can I do to help? Okay, I have just one question today. Um, my wife is a U.S. citizen. I'm a permanent resident. She's fighting for my daughter back uh, in Africa. But she's trying to fill out the form. She's already done. It's just one, uh, I think it's part five, number one, that says, have you ever previously filed a petition for any beneficiary or other alien? So um, what you should uh, put there, Considering the fact that she filed for me, I was an alien when we got married. So the, I don't the answer know. is yes. I filed for my husband. This is his name. Okay. This is his alien registration. But exactly, exactly that is the answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Bye. -bye. Let's go to Morshed in Toronto, Canada. Morshed. Hi, Brad. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, very good. Thank you. Actually, I'm calling from uh, Canada, and uh -huh. I used to live in the U.S. for uh -huh. 20 years. Right. Um, I was in a removal uh, procedure, and uh, my case, uh, like withheld, was granted in 2009. And then I, after a while, I changed my name, and then um, I actually uh, applied for Canadian uh, immigration. So you got then, so you got asylum in the United States. Did you get a green card in the United States? No, I had a, like a withheld was granted. Oh, like, you had you know, oh you had well you had withholding of removal. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. And then I, um, I applied for a Canadian immigration and my case was approved. Great. I left U.S. Uh, 10 years ago. 
And in the meantime, my sister applied in uh, 2007 for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, last year, my sister, uh, we got an approval uh, notice and uh, for the, you know, they're trying so, to. So, so this is this is your issue. I, I, I'm getting the gist of this. You you yes. came to the United States as an, uh, how did you enter the United States originally? Let me, let me ask as you As a that. student. As a student. As a student, okay. So you legally came to the United States as a student. You then ap right. applied for asylum. It was denied. You were put in removal. Your asylum right. was denied in removal, but you got something called withholding of removal, which means that uh, although you weren't able to prove your asylum claim, you were able right. to show that your life is in danger if you go back home. So the government agreed not to deport you, even though you were deportable or removable. You then, right. after you get that, so you're kind of like that withholding a removal is kind of leaves you in limbo in the United States. It allows you to get a work permit, but you can't right. travel. You're not really a permanent resident. You can never make it to citizenship. So you say right. to yourself, self, you know what? I can make it to Canada and I can become legal in Canada, do an asylum claim there or, or how, whatever you did. And I can right. and I can become a citizen in Canada. And maybe you already are. Right. And then you right. left the United States and you go to Canada and you make your life in Canada and you leave your family behind. Your sister files a visa petition for you, excuse me, back in 2007, which now comes due. So right. now you got, when did you leave the United States? Uh, 2011, uh, uh, January. Okay, so you got, you have two issues. Almost 10 years. Okay, you got two issues. Number one, yes. up until January 2021, you have a 10-year bar, uh, right. To, all right? But that 10-year bar is up in January 2021. So in reality, you don't got to deal with it. You know, we'll just, you know, make sure you get scheduled for your visa appointment sometime after January. But okay. number two, you, mm -hmm. you had withholding of removal and you left the United States. When you right. leave the United States with a withholding of removal, you self-deported. So you right. need a 212 waiver to return to the okay. United States after a prior deportation uh, in order to get your green card to come back to the US. Okay. That's what okay. you're gonna, that's your one issue that you're gonna need. Okay. Uh, we so can, it, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, the, the thing is like, you know, I can, is it easy for me to come to the United States uh, and adjust my status? No, or no, because you really, the, re the reality is you're not allowed back in the United States uh, within, uh, what, because because need to, you're uh, not allowed, you're not, A, you're not allowed back in the U.S. right now because of the 10-year okay, okay. bar. After the 10-year right. bar is up, you're not allowed because you're self-deported and you need a waiver. So if you were to come right. across the border and adjust, you committed a misrepresentation in two ways. One, you came to get a green card, and two, you didn't tell them that you were previously deported because if you did tell them at the border you were previously deported, they wouldn't have let you in. So the answer is right. no across the board. Okay. Uh, now, what would be my option? Let process in Canada and do a 212 waiver, and we can help you with all of that. So hold on one second. Okay. okay. The 212 waiver and yes. the processing in the Canada. Correct. Okay. Hold on one second. Let's go to Mohammed in Fresno, California. Mohammed. Hi, Brad. How, How are, are you? Mohammed. How? I'm good, sir. How are you, sir? Good, good. What's going on? Uh, sir, the things is getting worse now. <laughs> uh, I got married last month uh, on 14 August. Uh, my wife is a U.S. citizen, and I do have a pending asylum in San Francisco. My individual court date is April 2022, and I came into this uh, country on Feb 2016 uh, with the inspection. How? So I got per you had a visa. So I no no no. I, I came through the port of entry, Hidalgo. At Texas International Border. Uh huh. And they paroled you um, in. They uh, paroled you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They paroled me. They paroled me. The immigration officer. They paroled me. They gave me something like I ninety four okay. parole paper, something Fine. like that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, uh, like, uh, I put the asylum case based on my sexuality. Sexuality, like, uh, you know, I told them that I was a gay and all the stuff. Something but, like but that. now you're married to a and woman or a man. Yes, I I get married woman. Uh, I found a beautiful lady last year, and we've been in a relationship like a year now. So, so what happened? You found a beautiful lady, and you're no longer gay, or you were never gay to begin with? No, no, I definitely had a boyfriend here too uh, in the United States and back in India too. Uh, but the things has changed, you know. I don't know why. Like, I like to. All right, so you know, you're bisexual. Feeling. 
I can say bisexual or yeah, straight. I don't know, like you know, but I feel really good with the woman. This this lady is. Uh, well, like, I mean, well, really well I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, so. the answer is this. Um, you know, a because you got paroled in, you can file an adjustment directly with immigration. Uh, assuming you got paroled in, get your green card, and then just withdraw your asylum case. The big issue is, did you lie when you came across the border? You said you were homosexual, and here you are with a beautiful woman. And you know, you know, people don't wake up one morning and say, "Guess what? I'm not gay anymore." You, you're born that way. At least that's what, you know. That's what the general consensus is amongst people. Uh, the general consensus is that you can't change. You are who you are. And, you know, if you're, you, you're born as Lady Gaga, I was born this way. You know, she wrote a whole song about it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, all of a sudden you don't wake up one morning and now you're not gay. No one's going to believe that. Uh, perhaps... They could believe you're bisexual, but even if they believe you're bisexual, uh, you still didn't tell the truth at the border because you didn't say you were bisexual. You said you were gay. Yes, so so yes. there's an absolute misrepresentation there. Even if you say, and you really believe this in the bottom of your heart, when I came across that border, I was gay. I was gay when I filed my asylum. One day I woke up, I saw a beautiful woman. I said, wow, women are beautiful. I didn't realize maybe I'm not gay. No one's going to believe that because you, you are who you are. You're born who you're born. So, you know, yep. ultimately you're going to need a very, very good waiver. A very good waiver. Mm -hmm. All right. So hold, hold on one second. All right. Sure. All right. Let's go to Juliet in Chicago. Juliet. Hi, Brad. How you doing? I'm good. Okay, I want to ask, based on those new um, rules um, stated for October 2nd concerning um, filing fees, uh -huh. I want to adjust my status and I want to apply for waiver based on income. I want to know after October 2nd, will can I still apply for waiver? No, you can't do a waiver before and you can't do a waiver after. So if you're gonna file an adjustment of status. Well, let me ask you a question. What is, what is, maybe I'll take it back. I may take back my answer. How are you basing your adjustment? Asylee. Oh, it's an asylee. Okay, my apologies, I take it back then. Uh, because there's no poverty guideline restrictions for asylum. But any adjustment that you're gonna file, I was about to say, you can't do, ask for a fee waiver based on poverty because for an adjustment of status, you got to show you can be, support yourself and your petitioner can support yourself above the poverty guideline. But then I, wa I caught myself and I said, well, maybe you're in a category that doesn't require poverty guidelines and asylum is one of them. Uh, the answer is there's always a fee waiver before and after October 2nd. Okay. 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 It doesn't go away. Okay, Juliet. Juliet. The answer is you can file for a fee waiver as an asylee. I don't know what happened to Juliet, but hopefully she got that. Let's go to Inez in West Palm Beach, Florida. Inez. Hello, Punk Brad. How you doing, Inez? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I want to ask you a quick question. Yes. My husband is here with me. And he just come up now, three weeks. And um, I would like to know if I can. I had filed for him already, but the, he was here before. All right. So, so let me ask you: You're a U.S. citizen or a yes. resident? I'm a citizen. Okay. Please. And you say your husband's here. He came as a visitor. Yes, please. When did he come? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, and you yes. already filed an I-130 for him. You filed for him? Yes, I filed for him, but they turned it down. Why did they turn him down? Because he left when he was here and went back home before. And um, it, 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 it got disapproved. You filed an adjustment previously for him? Yes, sir. Got it. So your husband was here on a visitor's visa. You filed an adjustment for him and then he left 
and he went home. Yes. He, he came back on the same visa. Yes. Wow. Okay. I'm I'm surprised they allowed him in on that same visa because between me and you and whoever is listening, had the airport known that he filed an adjustment previously, they would have deported him at the airport. So he got very lucky he came here. Um, and now he came back on a visa. His visa was good. They let him in. You got to wait 90 days and then file again an adjustment. Uh, 90 days 90 days not in two weeks because then he'll be denied 90 days okay. all right hold on one second you're gonna need help let's go to rita in washington dc rita hello brad <laughs> thank you how are you um, i'm good good how are you good good what's going on um uh, i've been on f1 visa uh, i did my master's and my phd in um the u.s so my husband is in the army wow. and is a citizen so um I'm from Nigeria. Can Great. I file uh, an adjustment? Yes, you can. Okay, okay. I was just confused. Yes, you can. No, Rita, 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 you have a PhD. Uh, Rita, you have a PhD. You're smarter than me. I don't have a PhD. <laughs> okay, no, no, I, I'm no, talking to a I'm woman just... who's smarter than I am. Uh, the no, I just, just, I, I just so you know, yeah, 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 right. yeah the, the answer is yes. I'm, I'm joking around, but the answer is yes. Because <laughs> okay, um, okay. the Nigerian ban applies to immigrant visas at the embassy, not adjustment here. Oh, okay, okay. All right, cool. all right. Thank so, you. All right, good luck. All right, let's go to Anne in Nashua, New Hampshire. Anne. Hi, Brad. Hi, Anne. Yes, I have three questions. Mm -hmm. um, one is, I saw for I own thirty for my husband. My husband is a Haiti, and I'm a U.S. citizen. Right. Um, we are at the the step where um, my my documents are at NBC right now. He's his stuff, um, but um, they we they they accepted you know my documents, but I I didn't understand why they asked me for um, um, why my income wasn't enough because I had an offer letter because you know after Corona I was furloughed from my from my first job. I just recently got a job and um, sent the offer letter. Um, but the, uh, the offer letter stated how much I make a year. But they still told me I didn't make enough. But I was document something. Well, maybe, maybe they're, they're, they do it based on what your income is, not what your future income is. Oh, okay. So that's probably, so that's probably what it is. So you'll probably need oh, a second okay. affidavit of support. Or, okay, but I did. I yeah. did submit that, and also they told me that um, the, the embassy in Haiti is not like fully totally functioning right now. Like, it's like, what should I do? Should I just wait? No, you want your husband here. Push on. Yes, get a second. I do. Yes, push on. I mean, you if you want your husband here, if anything, I have learned dealing with immigration. People who sit on their hands and wait never get anything. You gotta, you got, you you gotta be proactive and push along. All right. So uh, that's the opposite of what I ever I would advise anybody to wait. And the only time I advise people to wait is when there's nothing that can be done. In your case, there's something to be done. We'll get a second affidavit of support. We'll push it along at the National Visa Center. We'll get a transfer to the U.S. Embassy in Haiti. And if we gotta call Haiti and scream and yell, where's this visa appointment? That's what we'll do. Oh, okay. All right. Hold on one second. Okay. Hold on. Let's go to Alice Gun. A Lucy Gun, perhaps. Uh, hello. How are you? Hi, brother. I'm up call. What, what's going on? I'm um, great. I just have a quick question for you to just advise me on. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm married to a U.S. citizen, and I got my uh, my 10 years green card in 2016. Right. But uh, 2017, we had a business standing, uh, so we've been living apart from each other. But still, we are still on good times. But not that we are not just that we are living together. But uh, I want to fight for my citizen next year uh, after completing my five years uh, legal residence. Is there anything? Is it going to go, is it going to go fight my naturalization? No, it won't. Uh, they may ask about the validity of your marriage at the time you got your green card, but there was no requirement that you live with your wife for five years. Okay. All right, so you'll be okay. Okay. 
All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go to Dunstan in Chicago. Dunstan. Hi. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. What's going on? So my question is, um, I I came into the U.S. Um, as on a visitor's visa, which I overstayed because I had a baby and the baby had um, some growth delays. Had some what? So uh, baby had some had what? Some had some developmental oh, okay. delays. Okay, sorry about so, that. So the child had to go through some therapies. Some therapies. So my question is, um, I we filed the I one thirty, and now it's at the NVC stage um, back in my country. But the thing is, I'm already here, and um, under the visa bulletin, it's showing that um, my category is it the F two F two uh, category is current. Are you so are I you would, are you in legal status, or you overstayed your time? Overstayed my yeah, time. If you've overstayed your time, you can't adjust in the F two A category. So you have to wait on your spouse to become a citizen. I would not be okay. going home to pick up a green card. A, it sounds like you may need a provisional waiver. B, they're going to give you a very hard time for giving birth in America. Okay. So wait on your okay. husband's citizenship. I don't know how far that is down the line, but that's where you're at now. Okay. Okay. He's just awaiting an interview. Okay. So hopefully so. Hang okay. in there. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's go to Michael in Staten Island. Michael. Hi, Brad. How you doing? Yeah, good evening. Yeah, I have um, three questions. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a U.S. legal permanent resident since 2016. Right. But I've been divorced since 2017. Mm -hmm. Are my windows open for now to apply for my citizenship? Are windows open, you asked? Yeah, is, my win is the window open for me to apply for my How citizenship? When did you get your green card? I got my permanent resident in 2016, when? January 8th. January 8th. Uh, you can file for your citizenship approximately October 12th or 13th of this year. That'll be less oh. than 90 days before the five year anniversary. Oh, okay. All right, so wait a couple then weeks. I'm, okay, can I apply for any of my dependent, like my mother, to file for our citizenship? No, not until you become a citizen. Oh, the only okay. people you can About file it? for as a, as a resident is spouse and children. Okay. Um, but there's a ban on my country. That's why I'm asking if she's eligible. There's a what? There's a, oh, because she's in Nigeria? A ban. Yeah. First of all, you're not going to be a citizen for at least a year. Let's worry about the ban in a year from now, and let's hope Biden wins. Okay. All right? Just move, move yeah. on with life. You can't worry about what will be in a year from now. Because if you asked okay. me a year ago... What are we in September? You asked me a year ago, Brad, in a year from now, will you believe that 200,000 people will die from a virus and will be in quarantine for months? I'll be like, what are you out of your mind? So, I mean, a lot changes, right? Mm hmm. All right, so hang in there. Just file your citizenship and then worry about it. Okay, I'll get in touch, in touch with Marina then. Great. So she's okay. going to help me. Great, great. That's in my Connecticut office. Hold on. Yeah. All right. Let's go to Franklin in Greenboro, North Carolina. Franklin. Yes, sir. Um, good day, sir. Please, I have two questions. Yes. Um, the first question is, on the second of, um, sorry, on the 11th of February, 2000, this year, I went for um, a stroke interview. So immediately after the interview, the officer gave me um, a RFE to produce my um, utility bills from six months to one year since right. I've been married for two years. Okay. And immediately after the interview, I got all my bills, everything from six months to one year bills. I sent it to them. I think on the um, 2nd of March this year, and up to now, I have not had any response from them. How did Stokes interview go? To me, it was some clarification about the child, because I applied for a B1, B2 visa back home in Nigeria. That was in 2015, and they said, I told them that I have a child. And? So me, me, I know I don't have any child. Did you I tell them you had a child? Um, no, I don't have a child. Did you tell them you had a child, or maybe the agency that did your application told them you had a child? 
I don't know none of my none to my understanding. All right. Well, it's possible, you know, they you know, they may do an investigation, determine whether you're in a real marriage. You're from Nigeria, so they purposely delay Nigerians. They may deny you for fraud on you lying at the embassy about children that you may or may not even realize. So you have multiple issues and you're asking me why you haven't heard because you're Nigerian. Yeah. They didn't necessarily believe it was a real marriage, so they asked you for more documentation, and they're figuring out what happened at the embassy. Did you make a misrepresentation? So combine that with the fact that immigration was closed for months. That's why you haven't heard yet. Uh, I don't know if you know it's possible you're you're down in North Carolina that they may come to your home and do a, a, a site visit. That's possible too. So you're basically, for lack of a better word, under investigation. Uh, I don't know if you have an attorney or not, but that's where you're at. Okay. All Although right. I do have an attorney, but I was thinking because she's she made an inquiry, but I'm yet to hear feedback from. Yeah. Her. So that's that's the answer at the moment. Okay. All right. Okay. Hang, hang in there. Yes, hang, yeah. Hang in there. Just hang in there. All right. Let's go to Noni in Austin, Texas. Noni. Hi, Uncle Brad. How you doing? Good, and you? Good, good. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, getting married to my fiancé who came with on a J-1 visa. Right. And um, she was married before, but she never filed anything with immigration. So during her course of marriage, I don't know the issues that they had. And then they ended up divorcing. This is your, so right this now, is your fiancé. She's my fiance right now. We're getting oh, oh, married. Oh, he's your fiance. Next. Okay, fine. Okay, he's she your my fiance. he is your fiance. Okay, so he previously yes. got married and never filed no, anything. She, it's a same sex marriage. Same sex marriage. She was she married. Yes. She was married to a man or woman the last time around. She was married to a man for uh, two years, but she never filed anything with immigration. And, and now, who's the one who needs the green card? My fiance. Okay. I'm, so, the, I'm the U.S. citizen. Okay. So, you know, again, immigration, I think we took this call earlier, but it's different a little bit. Immigration wears blinders on. You're either, you're either a homosexual or you're not a homosexual. You're either gay or you're not gay. And here there's a situation where you're going to ent enter into a same-sex marriage uh, and the prior marriage they're going to see was between a man and a woman. And they're going to start questioning, A, are you guys just really good friends and, she's just, and you guys are just trying to help each other out? Is this a business relationship or is this a real relationship? So you guys, it, you know, have to be on the same page. You got to be living together, have a financial relationship, and they may come to your home. They may do a site inspection. They may ask you very personal questions at your interview. Can it, be, can it be done? But, you know, you got to be thinking ahead of time if you're an immigration officer and you sit down and say, yes, we're in a same sex marriage. Um, and by the way, you guys are in Texas. So, you know, Texas is a little yeah. more conservative than New York or L.A. or Miami. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of less nuance in Texas than there would be New York, Miami, L.A., which, you know, maybe a little more liberal, perhaps, officer. Uh, they're going to say, wait a second, two years ago, you were living with a man, you were married with a man, and now you're here with a woman and you're telling me it's a real marriage and you guys are gay. What was two years ago? And you're going to say, and, and she's going to say legitimately, I'm sure one of the two, either she's bisexual or she was hiding the fact that she was gay and she didn't realize she was gay until, you know, a lot of people, you know, and it happens all the time. I know lots and lots. I have a very good friend who was married to a woman. And the mm -hmm. woman left him after several years of marriage and, and realized she was, she was gay and ended up marrying another woman and they're happily married. So it happens. I'm not saying anybody's lying. Because I've seen it happen in my, to my own friend, you know, not in, mm -hmm. in terms of in his life that that scenario happened. I'm just saying as an immigrant, I'm thinking as an, you know, as an immigration attorney and going into an interview in immigration in Texas, they're going to say, wait a second, you weren't gay two years ago and now you are. You're just going to, you know, there has to be a full explanation of what happened and, you know, expect, mm -hmm. expect that. Okay. And um, 
I'm also uh, filing for her kids that are under 12 years. Would that be a problem? No, as well? you can. You're allowed to file for them. And obviously she had children, okay. so, you know, unless they were adopted, you know, they, she was she was having sex with a man at one point in life, I assume. So, I mean, all of these things are going to be an issue. But expect it. If it's legitimate, don't worry about yes. it. Eventually, you'll prove it all. Yes. All right? Hold on Thank if you need you, help. Uncle Brad. Okay, you're welcome. Hold on if you need help. All right. LaToya in West Palm Beach, Florida. LaToya. Hi. Good Hi, day, how are Brad. you? How are you doing? I'm good. Um, I filed I-751 and I used the credit card, um, can, the credit card authorization to pay for it. Right. But my credit card was stolen. What can I do? What do you mean it was stolen? Was it, was it? It was did lost. It, did it the charge, the charge went through? No. So the charge did not go through? Not yet. And you filed it online? No, I filed it, the I-75, I sent, sent the paper, I posted it. Oh, you posted it and you filled out the credit card information? Yes. All right, well, they're going to ask you, they're going to return it and reject it, probably. And then you'll have to file it again. Okay. All right, that's, or, or so maybe what you want to do is just file another one right now and expect the first one to be rejected. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.